Now the first time you open After Effects can seem quite daunting and you might be tempted to go up and hit that red X in the top corner. However, not to worry because by the end of this video you'll have a firm understanding on the basics of After Effects and have made your first animation. So let's get to it. So once you're in After Effects, we need something to do. We need something to make our magic happen. So I've downloaded two stock footage uh, videos here from Pexels. You can feel free to do the same and follow along, uh, but we need to import them. So we can go up here to File, Import and File, or we can go to our location on our computer and simply drag them into the project window on the left. We then want to keep everything organized. So I'm just gonna drop these down into a folder and rename this to Footage. Now, what we want to do is create a new composition. You can click this button here or in the center of your screen where it says new composition. I'm just going to call this sequence a mindset to 25 frames a second and a duration of 10 seconds. You'll see our preview window now popped up and we get the timeline open down the bottom. So what we're going to do is drag some footage down to our timeline and you can play this through by pressing spacebar on your keyboard or simply scrubbing along with the timeline indicator. So while it looks cool, we have our first bit of footage and After Effects, we need to do something with it. So I'm going to start with adding some text uh, to our screen. So I'm going to cl click the text button up here, click in the center of the screen and I'm just going to type in my first animation. Now, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I like the font and everything. But if you want to change this, you can go to your character tab up here, which may be closed. You just want to open that up and you'll have all your font options here. Um, you can change the sizing how you like and everything like that. I'm just going to reset mine to 150. And then you'll notice it's actually out of alignment and we could mess around doing all this and trying to get it pixel perfect. Or we can use our align tab over here, press align horizontally and align vertically, making sure the align layers is set to composition. So this looks pretty cool and we have our first bit of text. Now what we're going to do is make this animate. We're going to select our layer in the timeline window below, click this drop down arrow and click the drop down arrow where it says transform. And then we get all these properties opened up and I'm sure you can guess what they all do. Simply rotates, scales, your opacity is the, the fading, the fading out and your position of course is your position. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move forward to one second and I'm going to press the stopwatch on the position tab here and this will create a keyframe. So I'm going to go back to zero seconds and then I'm going to drop the position on the Y axis. So I'm just clicking and dragging on this second number here, which is the Y number, and this will bring it down. You can also just click and drag your text if you want to and place it wherever you want. Now you'll notice we now have two keyframes and keyframes are pretty simple. Basically at zero seconds, we're telling After Effects that we want our text at 960 and 1237. And then by one second, we want it to be at 960 and 592. Now because After Effects is the genius that it is, it will do all the in-betweens of the keyframes for us and makes the animation. So if we play this back, there we go, our first animation in After Effects. Now we can make this look a lot nicer, however, and make things act as they normally would. So there's something called easing, and this essentially accelerates things and decelerates things within our animation, and it's what makes things look nice. So we're going to click and drag to select both of our keyframes, and you can right click, keyframe assistant, and easy ease, or you can press F9 on your keyboard. Now if we play this back, it's a little smoother and has a little more to it. Now you can take this a step further by using something called the graph editor, but I don't want to confuse you too much and it's a lot to take in. So we'll come back to that at the end. Now we have our first bit of text. Uh, we want to do something with this and we, we want to have it transition between two pieces of footage. So how can we do that? What I'm going to do is select both of these layers in my timeline and we're going to go up to layer and pre-compose. Now we're going to call this video one. And all this is essentially doing is putting both of those layers into its own composition. So I can click inside this by double clicking it and then it will open it up and our text and video is still there. But the beauty of this is, is I can change this in here, but if I want to change maybe the size of the overall composition without affecting my main composition, I can change the scaling of this one or the position of this one without affecting my main composition, should I have more than one in here. So it's a neat way of essentially using groups in After Effects, seeing as After Effects doesn't have groups built in, which it's a long requested feature and would be really nice rather than having to pre-compose things, but pre-compose is the way. If you're used to Premiere, it's kind of like nesting a sequence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this video one by 
pressing Control or Command if you're on Mac, and then D, and then we're going to drag this into our sequence as well. You'll notice nothing happened because it's the exact same, so I'm going to double click into this video too, and then I'm going to change the video out. So I'm going to select the first video on my timeline, and while holding Alt and selecting my new video, I'm going to drag that to the highlighted layer and that will swap that out. That means we don't have to drag it in and then delete it. It's an instant swap, which comes in useful for working with Illustrator layers or like this, working with video. Just make sure it's the same size and everything will stay the same. I'm then going to change the text on this to my second animation. We now have two pre-comps to use. And if I go back to my main pre-comp, which is called sequence, they're stacked on top of each other. So we need to animate between these. So what I'm going to do is at two seconds, I'm going to animate the first one to come off. So to see this, I'm just going to hit the I button here and this will hide our video to composition. So we can press P on our keyboard to bring up the position rather than having to go down into the transform properties. If we press P on the keyboard, it will solely bring up the position properties. So once again, I'm going to click the stopwatch to create a keyframe on two seconds. I'm going to move over to three seconds and then I'm going to drag this off screen just like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect just so it goes off screen. And then once again, we're going to select our keyframes and hit F9. This will just easy ease them. So we have this kind of motion going on. We could have this animate on and do the exact same as what we've just done by adding keyframes on the video 2 layer. However, there's an easier way we can do this and it's called parenting. So as it sounds, video 2, if we parent this to video 1, it will become a child of this first composition. We're going to do just that and it means we don't have to re-keyframe video 2 and any changes we make to video 1 composition will affect the video 2 composition, which is pretty cool. So all we're going to do is go over to this pick whip, pick whip over here and drag it down to video 1. Now what will happen is video 2 will move along with video 1. Now it's important to note here that I did this after the animation and that's what you need to take into account. If I undo this and then go to 2 seconds before the animation has happened and then parent it, the video 2 will move along with video 1 as it is a child. So where you parent it on the timeline does affect how it moves along the timeline as well. So you have to get it in the right spot and make sure it's after any moves that you want to do. So we now have our cool animation and we can just go back and watch it all by hitting spacebar. We have the text come up and then we slide between the two, which is quite cool. Now we can add some effects to this to make it look even nicer. So I'm just going to go into my video 2 composition and actually I quite want to blur the background so maybe this, the text stands out a bit more. So I'm going to select my video layer, I'm going to come up to my effects and presets tab up here and I'm going to type in blur. So we're going to select this Gaussian blur and drag this onto the video layer and then we get an effect control tab up here and I'm just going to click and drag to increase this blurriness and blur it out a little bit. Now, once again, using keyboard shortcuts, I'm going to press T on my keyboard to bring up the opacity. And I'm going to drop this down to 50% just so we can see the text a little better. Going back to our sequence now, we should see that this is nice and bright. And then we slide across and we have a blurred opacity background, which looks quite cool. Now, if you want a bit more to this, there is something called motion blur in After Effects. So when this will swipe, we'll have a bit of blur and it'll hide this line here. Now, you can do this by pressing this button right here. And automatically now After Effects will turn this on. So we can have motion blur between the transitions if that's the look you're going for. Now we have our animation, it's time to render. But I don't want this extra five seconds of footage here. So all we can do, we can go to the five second mark on our timeline and we can press N on our keyboard or simply drag this here. And we can cut this down to five seconds and this will be our work area. And this is all that After Effects will render. Now we need to select our project by going back to the project window, clicking sequence, going up to file, export and add to media encoder queue. This will add it to your Adobe Media Encoder queue and you'll see this pop up right here. And while it might look confusing, this is pretty much the only way I render at the moment and I barely ever use the built-in render queue. I find this much nicer for what I'm after without creating high file sizes. So right here we have our codec, so you can click that. And the best one to use, in my opinion, is the H.264. 
and this will open up a new dialog box as well by clicking that where we can alter everything so your output name if you click that you can choose where your video is going to render and change the name and hit save and then we can scroll down double check everything and if you know about codex and video rendering you're okay but don't get too scared a VBR is a variable bitrate or a CBR is a constant bitrate. I personally, when working with animation, use a CBR. However, it's, if it's video, I will use a VBR. So I'm just going to set that up to 16 to improve the quality a little bit and press OK. Then all you do is hit the green play button and then your render's going. You've created your first animation in After Effects. Congratulations. Now earlier I mentioned something called the graph editor and if you want to continue your After Effects journey and fully understand how that works, you can click on this video here. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.